Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. We're built for this. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha, conquer outdoors. We get along great with Yamaha. And one guy in particular that I have a really good relationship with was Scott Newby. Got talking with Scott one day and he said, you know what, Vern? We've got this really, really neat program that we're running right now, and it's called Realize Your Adventure. And to support it, we developed a vehicle to support that, and it's called an adventure rig. And as he was telling me about this adventure rig, I was just like, that's just like absolutely fantastic. So as we started talking a little bit more about this, I said, how about this? Luke and I are looking to sort of go on our next sort of adventure of our own. You guys are gonna be able to facilitate this great with your adventure rig. The tagline that you guys have, Realize Your Adventure, is just a perfect theme for our next sort of story. And why don't Luke and I fly down to your head offices in, in Atlanta, Georgia, and we'll take that rig and we'll go out and realize our own adventure. Basically what it is, is uh, it's a pickup truck, a Nissan Titan, that they've tricked out to go on adventures. And, and when I say tricked out, I mean it's like fully tricked out. It's got cool wheels and tires, it's got cool bumpers. Uh, it's got a truck cap that lifts up and creates a tent that you can stay in. It's got a generator in there, a pressure washer in there. Um, it includes the trailer that you put your vehicles on, your Yamaha vehicles on to go on your adventure. And the trailer includes Camp Chef stuff and extra gas. I mean, this is the kind of vehicle that you can jump in and you can go places no one's ever been before. After getting the keys, our next uh, destination was to head to Winrock. And Winrock is a park that uh, Luke and I have been familiar with, but we've never really had the opportunity to go and visit the park ourselves. We've been to Tennessee probably a dozen times, and every time we were down there, people say, have you been to Winrock? And this trip, we said, we're definitely going to Winrock. I am so excited for Dirt Tracks to be here. First of all, I love the show. Um, maybe fangirling a little bit, don't mean to. <laughs> Um, and second, um, I'm just really glad that Dirt Trucks came out to experience us. Uh, you know, when we got the call, we couldn't wait, and we really value Yamaha. You know, we have our, uh, we have a park sponsorship with them. One of the things we do with Yamaha is, along with many of their other destinations, we have Destination Yamaha, where people can come out and rent a side-by-side -side for the day and experience, first of all, the Yamaha Wolverine and experience the trail system. We have over 30 cabins, fully furnished, that have all your needs in it that you could possibly imagine. And then we have 39 RV sites and over 100 primitive sites. And then we also have two more yurts and we're about to build three more. With an attitude that is on par with some of the top hospitality providers in the country. And I think that's really what's helping set them apart. The other thing that really sets them apart is the quality of the trail. And when you have over 400 miles, one thing that you can really do is you can start to cater to the different styles of riders that are out there and the different types of vehicles. When we first got here to Windrock, we knew because there were so many trails, we were gonna need somebody to show us around. So the gentleman we hooked up with, his, his official title is head of security, but he's kind of a multi-purpose type guy around here and does all kinds of things. and has all kinds of other jobs that he does. Everybody calls him CE. He's a great guy, has nothing but information and history, he knows every trail of like the back of his hand, knows every spot, every nook and cranny of this 73,000 acre property. He knows every inch of it. So he was the perfect guy to head out on the trail, not just because he knew it all, but because he was also really fun to hang out with and just, just a generally cool guy. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Power Sports, race inspired performance. One of the best things about Wind Rock is they have a huge variety of trails and trails that catered specifically to each of the vehicles that we brought with us. If you are an ATV rider, let's say it, and you own a Grizzly and you like to ride more technical, narrower trails that maybe a larger side-by-side -side wouldn't fit on, 
Windrock has that and they have some of the best trails we've ever seen that fit in that category. So you can come here and adventure with your Grizzly or with your ATV. The other types of trails they have are, are sort of more technical, wider side-by-side -side trails. And that was something I was interested in trying the YXZ on and seeing just how well does it handle rocky terrain, steep terrain. But mixed in with that is a lot of high-speed stuff too. Wider, smoother trails that you can really run the YXZ the way it was meant to be run. And then of course the Wolverine is sort of a do-it-all. I mean, it, it really is a multi-purpose side-by-side -side that can do almost anything. So any trail at Windrock was a Wolverine trail. The Wolverine, it's sort of your jack of all trades side by side. It's your sport utility side by side that can do a little bit of everything and do everything exceptionally well. The Wolverine was perfect for sort of going out, sort of doing a little bit of rock crawling, going in the mud, tackling some reasonably challengeable hill climbs. But more than anything, it was just a vehicle that was exceptionally comfortable for all day riding. And it can accommodate you and your wife, you and your, your kids, and take all the gear that you want as well and you can have a full day with the Yamaha Wolverine. The YXZ I mean, what can you say about a YXC? It's, it's got the sound, it's got the power, it's got the suspension, it's got the ergonomics. Everything about that vehicle is just suited to high-speed trail riding or technical trail riding. Your sight lines over the hood. I mean, for this type of riding here at Windrock where there is a lot of technical stuff, those sight lines over the hood of the YXC are absolutely priceless and they're better than any other vehicle on the market for sure. I was very surprised at how well the Sport Shift worked and how it handled first gear rock crawling with the, the auto clutch system that kicks in and out, it really did work better than I thought it would. And, and there wasn't anywhere I couldn't go. I never once got into a position where the YXE couldn't take me where I wanted to go. Of course, when things got faster, it definitely took me where I wanted to go. So that was a lot of fun. The Grizzly, when it came to, to riding the vehicles in, in their different environments, where the Grizzly really, really shines is it really shines for that guy that still likes the narrow trails, the 50-inch trail, the guy that likes the technical riding, the guy that really wants to sort of have that interactive experience with, with the, the bike. And the Grizzly 700cc, it's not as powerful as some of the other ATVs out there, but one thing that Yamaha has always been really good at is they keep the vehicle exceptionally light and exceptionally nimble. So you don't need a thousand cc's to have fun on the Grizzly. It's, a, it's a, an ATV that it just performs exceptionally well. It's light, it's nimble. It's still more than powerful enough for what you need for, for a trail ride. And as we got riding, uh, throughout the day, CE, who is a diehard ATV guy, wanted to make sure that he spent as much time on that Grizzly as possible. And CE is a really good rider. So he was able to really, you know, push that, that Grizzly to its limit. And it was really neat to hear throughout the day his impressions of the Grizzly and how well he thought it was, was performing. There you go. A, a Grizzly is perfect for that guy that wants to sort of focus more on the narrow trail. This trip overall was about realizing an adventure, realizing something that we'd never done before, going on an adventure in a way that we'd never adventured before. I, could, I can't think of a better place than Windrock to have done this. I can't think of better partner to, to work with than Yamaha because the vehicles match the terrain. The idea, the concept behind adventuring matches this place perfectly. We rode great trails. We saw great landscapes and all kinds of really cool spots. The, to cap it all off though, to end this trip, we ended up on the Vista at sunset, up on the overlook right at sunset looking out over the mountains. And as I was sitting up there, I was thinking to myself, you know, adventures are supposed to end like this. They're supposed to end with something that you'll never forget. The adventure you should never forget, but we always seem to remember the end of the adventure. So if it ends on a sunset, looking out over vast mountains that go on as far as you can see, that's gonna stick with me forever. And, and, and I'm never gonna forget this trip. With Yamaha trying to facilitate this as much as possible with the adventure rig, with promoting Realize Your Adventure, with being able to work with great partners such as Winrock with the Destination Center, it's just another way that we can sort of grow the sport that we all have come to love. 
And when you work with great partners such as Winrock, it's just another opportunity for us to go and share what we love. And why not share your next great adventure? Vern and I have nothing but fun when we travel. We're constantly cracking jokes and, and making fun of each other, which is awesome. But Vern and I get along really well, and we always have a fun time riding. He's willing to try anything, I'm willing to try anything. So when we decided to go on an adventure and realize our own adventure, I couldn't think of a more perfect person to realize an adventure with than Vern, who was going to make the adventure not only fun, but really fun and crazy. Just if we needed to explain. Oh yeah, baby, oh yeah. That was in focus. <laughs> <laughs> and we saw Sasquatch. <laughs> All right, you happy with that? Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Shock Strap, Start Strapped, Stay Strapped. In last week's episode, we were able to get our Maverick Trail outfitted with an easy to install and remove Kimpex click and go to plow and push frame. And while we would be ready to clear any driveway of snow, I do have two more items that'll give us a little edge as well as add in some comfort for those really cold days of winter ahead. Right up front, we have the issue of seeing what we're plowing. And there is a lot of light on this Maverick from the headlights as well as the light bar up top. But the truth is, both of those items send light a lot further down the trail and not directly in front where we'll be plowing. So to solve this problem, a simple 1200 lumen 6000K Cree LED spotlight will mount up to our HMF front bumper on the already available light bar mount tabs. And because of the design of the spotlight mount, I can actually angle it down towards the snow where I'm going to be plowing. The spotlight is rated for over 50,000 hours of use, so I won't need to be worrying about longevity. And it comes in an IP68 rated sealed housing that won't let moisture in. So we won't have an issue with fogging because of the heat from the rad up front. Possibly best of all is the minimum 20 watt draw from this type of light. And when you're running the winch during plowing, that can mean the world of difference for your battery life. Now attaching the spotlight to the Maverick's battery is another pretty simple setup because it comes with a push and click type connector and that matches up to the push and click type connector on the wiring harness. This wiring harness is designed for a single light and has everything from a relay to a built-in fuse and a pre-wired illuminated switch as well. Connections are simple to the positive and negative terminals under the dash, and with a small hole drilled for the switch, we're ready to light the way. Now, while the front light is very handy and does give us an edge on plowing, I did mention something earlier about some added comfort. And that comes to us by way of this super cool heated steering wheel cover. While at first I was a little skeptical, I've gone over this product from Kimpex and it's built very well, is crazy easy to install and likewise take off for the summer, and plugs into your 12 volt port on your side by side. I know from a lot of experience that the first thing to get cold when plowing a big driveway is my hands, especially when going from steering wheel to shifter to winch remote and back. Well, now with two simple settings, you have up to 80 degrees Celsius or 176 degree Fahrenheit heat at your wheel allowing you to work longer on those bitter cold days, but truthfully, it's a great accessory for those spring and fall rides when the temps are low, but you're not wanting to wear thick gloves. All around, it's a really great idea. Heck, we like heated steering wheels in our trucks and there's heat inside the cab. In your side-by-side, -side, this just makes all the sense in the world. While there have been a lot of parts and pieces that have gone into this Maverick Trail at the end of the day, I know that it's not some swamp-dominating monster or some dune-jumping beast, but I feel that the accessories we put on this Maverick Trail have been a lot more for what the average person uses their side-by-side -side for. 12 months of the year service, and not just looking pretty on some trailer in the driveway. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Argo. Go anywhere. I can only count a handful of times in this industry that something truly new has been attempted, and more importantly, actually been successful. Suzuki with the four-wheeled ATV, Honda with the four-by-four ATV, John Deere with the Gator, Yamaha with the Rhino, Polaris with the Razor, Pan Am with the two-up ATV. These are all vehicles that were the first of their kind in some way and that changed the industry forever. What I want to know, as I'm sure many of you do as well, is whether or not Polaris's new 55-inch wide Scrambler and Sportsman models will eventually be included in this list. Obviously, the Scrambler is pretty specialized, meant mostly for high-speed, big bump type riding. It has almost no rack space or storage, so any type of utility use is pretty much out the window. But the Sportsman's different. Yes, it's 55 inches wide, and yes, it does have 14 inches of rear suspension travel, but it also has racks that can haul up to 500 pounds and a two-inch hitch receiver. 
My hypothesis is this. If the Sportsman 1000S is as good or better than the standard Sportsman for utility purposes, the 55 wide platform will be successful. If it's not any better, it will simply become a niche product that will appeal to only a few riders with specific needs and deep pockets. So with all that said, today I'm gonna test this Sportsman 1000S just like I'd test any other Sportsman. Instead of shredding fire roads at 80 miles an hour, I'm gonna take it out on regular everyday ATV trips. And I'm gonna see just how good it performs, where and how the largest segment of riders would end up using it. As you can see, winter has hit us here in Canada, which makes this test even more real world and is perfect for what I have planned at the end of this story. First and foremost, it needs to be understood that the chassis of the Sportsman 1000S is not based on the chassis of the regular Sportsman at all. This is a completely new chassis built from the ground up to be a 55 inch wide ATV. Obviously it's wider, but it's also substantially longer than your typical Sportsman. With a 56.8 inch wheelbase, it's 3.8 inches longer to be exact. It also has more wheel travel with 12 inches up front and 14 inches in the rear. All of this combines to give a total ground clearance number of a whopping 14.5 inches. Before I headed on the trail, I set all four Walker Evans piggyback shocks to full soft, and I just gotta be perfectly honest here. This is the best riding ATV I have ever swung a leg over. But that should really come as no surprise. It's got more travel and wider suspension arms tend to give a more plush ride on any vehicle, but it just didn't seem to matter what I rode over or how hard I rode over it. The 1000S just ate it up and I barely felt it. The ground clearance is what really impressed me though. You can drive right over top of obstacles that would stop any other ATV dead in their tracks. The ability to go over things I've always had to go around in the past meant I could take different lines on familiar trails, which helped in avoiding rough sections altogether. In the water, these long arched A-arms and huge ground clearance allowed the Sportsman S to dig down into the mud and establish wheel ruts and find traction in places that would leave any other stock ATV high centered. From a ride quality and capability standpoint, this thing is unreal, no question. But what about handling, both high and low speed on and off the trail? extra wide is always extra better, right? Not always. This is actually one area that this ATV surprised me. Now, obviously stability in the corners is insane. It never feels like it's rolling over onto its outside set of tires or that the inside wheels are getting overly light. It just stays flat, which is confidence inspiring. With that said, on smoother roads at higher speeds, the handling seemed very twitchy. Even a slight input into the handlebars resulted in a greater direction change than I was expecting. Getting the rear end to break loose and slide during high-speed cornering also required more effort than I was used to on an ATV. It seemed to want to drive around the corner instead of slide through it. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but if you are used to a regular ATV being ultra flickable, it's going to take you some time to get used to this S model. On the trail, handling was faultless though. High speed or low speed, it just seemed at home where the conditions were rough. I was expecting to struggle with hitting obstacles with the wheels due to their wide stance, but I realized I drive wider side-by-sides all the time. So I think if you're coming from a side-by-side, -side, this extra width won't be an issue. But if you're coming from a standard width ATV, it's just one more thing you're probably gonna have to get used to. What did take some getting used to for me was how far out the front wheels actually are. The extra 3.8 inches of wheelbase is added almost entirely to the front end. The wheels are contacting bumps sooner than you expect, which can throw you off a bit. But again, nothing I didn't get comfortable with very quickly. I'm not going to talk a lot about power here because the 952cc single overhead cam twin cylinder engine found under the seat here is the exact same one that's found in the standard Sportsman 1000 that we're already very familiar with. What I will say is simply this, with this much travel, this much stability, this much ground clearance and 89 horsepower, I can ride this ATV faster than any other ATV I have ever tested. It is a rocket, but it's also extremely civilized. Thanks to multiple drive modes, low speed hauling or crawling are buttery smooth. Even picking your way through tight tree sections in performance mode, this engine never feels jerky or engagement abrupt. Is the Sportsman 1000S as good at general everyday trail riding as the standard Sportsman 1000? Does it make a good day-to-day -day recreational vehicle for average riders like you and I? Is it more than just a Scrambler 1000S with fenders? Yes, yes, and definitely yes. No matter what I tried to do with the Sportsman 1000S, it did it without any issue or complaint. In fact, I'm prepared to make the very bold statement that pretty much everything I tried to do with this vehicle, it did better than a standard Sportsman. Could the Sportsman 1000S replace your current Sportsman 1000 for day-to-day -day sport and utility duty? 
absolutely. And to prove this point, I'm handing this unit over to AJ for a full winter utility makeover, including a Polaris plow, windshield, and hot grips. Then I'm gonna use it to plow my driveway all winter long. You know that song that goes, anything you can do, I can do better? Kind of seems like that song was written for the Sportsman 1000S, doesn't it? It's a Polaris Sportsman, but taken to another level in every way. And I think it proves that this new 55 inch wide platform is both a game changer and is definitely here to stay. Dirt Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. Can-Am, we're built for this. And by Hercules Tire, ride on our strength. Thanks for watching Dirt Tracks TV. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and leave us a comment. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. And if you want to be notified of future updates, make sure you turn the bell on. Thanks for watching.